Africa has a unique opportunity to fuel its growth by betting on technologies such as augmented reality, commonly known as AR or virtual reality, what is commonly known as VR. Hello everyone, my name is Nick Canali and welcome to this segment of our Tech Trends Chat. Africa has a very unique opportunity to fuel its growth by betting on technologies such as VR or virtual reality and augmented reality or what's commonly known as VR. These technologies have been touted as the next big thing, especially for media. They are more prevalent and can reach more users. As headsets and equipment are getting cheaper, 360 degree cameras are less expensive than let's say an iPhone and tech companies are investing more in extended reality. So, what are the opportunities for Africa with this particular tech? Well, AR and VR use compute-generated simulations to create three-dimensional image or environment that's very close to the real world. Currently, most VR environments are experienced through specially designed headsets, while AR can be extended into phones, tablets, and basically any other gadget. So one of the local startups that is doing this, that is just really using VR and AR to tell African stories is Falohai. The company is changing the content creation and marketing landscape using these technologies. Falohai tailor makes creative solutions and services that immerse the African audience into extended reality experiences. I think VR and AR is really going to complement um, a lot of technologies that already exist and solve problems that we've, we've had almost for forever. For example, uh, one of the kind of work that we do is that we make simulations for high-risk training places. So rather than taking an employee straight into uh, a very dangerous place and training them there, we can simulate that environment and make them safe. So the way I see it, it's going to be something that um, a lot of companies, a lot of um, households are going to have that will give them a massive experiences and um, help businesses transcend from um, not, uh, the digital space to the metaverse. Educating the consumer is a very big uh, thing of what we do, but not just educating them about the technology, but also telling them that it could solve certain uh, problems. First of all, it feels amazing. It feels amazing to work with VR tech because number one is uh, technology in terms of storytelling is really evolving and being able to work with such an evolving uh, tech like VR helps storytellers or creative to tell stories in new ways and new using new formats and also um, to be able to create certain specific emotions such as empathy, connection, um, you know, all of those emotions that you, you're driving towards so that you can be able to, to capture your audience in, a, in an emotive way. So one of the things that we did is that we worked, for example, with uh, the local government of Machakos County and Google Africa to map uh, businesses using um, uh, 360 photos and using that technology to empower them, especially during the COVID-19 period. Um, that's uh, one of the many ways that we are exposing that technology to very many businesses, at the same time showing them how it can benefit them. Uh, apart from that is that we are, that's why we're also training a lot of artists to, to use this technology. Um, the way we see it is that once um, you have these uh, artists, um, filmmakers um, adopting this technology that um, it, it, people get to understand it and get to know it. And apart from the economic empowerment that it gives them, it, uh, the, the, the fact that people understand that this technology is here gives them ideas of how we could also use that technology. So that way it becomes a self-sustaining sort of uh, marketing and uh, educating system. You're able to capture um forgotten history or able to bring it to life and also to, let's say bring that experience to the audience without the audience moving an inch like I can be sitting here right now and let's say I want to tell a story about climate change and I want to show the devastating effects it has had in the environment 
literally um, I don't need to tell I don't need to move the, the, the audience to that place all I need is the headset and the technology and then the story and then I can immerse the audience into that At Followhide, we have two kind of like sectors we tackle, which is the commercial and then also now the um, art scene. So with, on the commercial side, we technically do a lot of 360 video productions, uh, simulations, um, augmented reality experiences, and so on and so forth. Then with the, with the art scene, we are currently training artists to make art uh, with VR headsets and also with augmented reality. Um, and helping them, not just training them, but going beyond them, trying to get them contracts, uh, jobs, and exposing them to the greater uh, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality uh, industry, not just locally, but also internationally. We've even worked with the manufacturers such as uh, Coca-Cola, uh, the bottling plant here in Kenya, um, to show step-by-step step, um, uh, Coca the Coca-Cola bottle from from the factory to the table. So uh, not just, um, I would say, the service industry, but also the manufacturing um, and also the education system, whereby now uh, we're working with various um, universities and, and educators to, to use this technology beyond just um, commercial side of it. Um. Technology in terms of storytelling is really evolving and being able to work with such an evolving um, tech like VR helps storytellers or creatives to tell stories in new ways, in new, using new formats and also um, to be able to create certain specific emotions such as empathy, connection, um, you know, all of those emotions that you're driving towards so that you can be able to to capture your audience in a in an emotive way. I think it's amazing that uh, I think for the first time in a long time that Africa seems to be kind of in touch with the technologies that are um, existing around the world. And for for me, I think being a pioneer, I think there's a responsibility to make sure that. Um, once the industry is growing, that you need to make sure that you bring as many uh, stakeholders uh, as possible. You need to make sure that people understand the technology and use it for the right reasons. Um, not just not just that, but also trying to look at policy. Um, how can we as, we, as this industry continues to grow, how can we plug in into policy and see uh, how we can make it easier for some of this uh, technology to be imported into Kenya, for example. So for us, um, we take it as a very big responsibility. Um, we are always in conversation with very many people in different industries to understand uh, how, uh, how can we take this technology to the next level and how can we make sure that it's useful to, to Kenyans and Africans in, at large. From the conversation you've seen me having with Walid, it's clear VR has the potential to tackle major issues in education, healthcare, entertainment, media, among others pressing issues that the continent is facing. Although it's still a new concept, the country's cutting edge creators like Falo Haid are already recognizing the opportunities to use VR to tell stories in a new ways. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nixon Kanali. I'll see you on the next one.